Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another edition of No DQ&A Video. I think this is the fourth one this week. It's been that kind of week here on NoDQ.com. Actually, yesterday, Wednesday, was NoDQ.com's biggest day in traffic since the day after WrestleMania 28 back in 2012. So yesterday, a lot of stuff went down. Uh, you could check out the latest news and rumors on NoDQ.com right now. Tons of articles up regarding CM Punk, Matt Hardy, and WrestleMania 30, the plans for the show. All that stuff is at NoDQ.com. Uh, with that being said, let's get down to your questions from spring.me slash Aaron Rift. First one today comes from Shelba Sarrar. Okay. Do you believe it would be better if WWE put Daniel Bryan into a triple threat match against Batista and Randy Orton as the main event for WrestleMania 30 instead of possibly having the two guys get booed and overtaken by Daniel Bryan chance? I agree with you. I think that you have to, well, you don't have to, but I think that if you want the fans in the arena to be satisfied with WrestleMania 30, you need to give them that Daniel Bryan moment and not just Daniel Bryan having a semi-main event match at WrestleMania. The fans that are going to WrestleMania, they want to see WrestleMania end with Daniel Bryan as the WWE champion. That's the moment that those fans want, and that's the moment that a lot of fans want to see be the end of WrestleMania with Daniel Bryan standing tall as a WWE champion. Will it happen? I don't know. WWE might stick to their guns. They might be stubborn. They might stick with their original plan, Batista, Randy Orton, but I think that there's a very good chance that if that match ends up being the WrestleMania 30 main event, it will get booed out of the building. The fans will not approve of that match, and um, they will either be dead for it, or they will just boo and chant Daniel Bryan. So I think that even if WWE told Batista he would get the title at WrestleMania 30, you can always have him win it at some point. It's just a championship. I think that WWE needs to go in that direction and have Daniel Bryan win the title. I mean, winning the title... At Extreme Rules in Seattle, that would be something special, but let's face it, not as many people will be watching that as WrestleMania. WrestleMania is the biggest show of the year, the show that people will be remembering uh, for years to come. So, you know, that's the best place to have Daniel Bryan finally overcome the odds and win the WWE Championship. So if it was my call, I would go with the triple threat. All right, this one comes from Sting HBK 316. Could you see John Cena, Randy Orton, Batista, and Brock Lesnar in a four-way for the title at WrestleMania, along with Bryan versus Triple H and Taker versus Sting? Well, I think that if WWE, and that's a big if, if they decide to change the WrestleMania title match, they're going to change it to the triple threat match with Daniel Bryan added to the mix. I don't see them doing a four-way match, and especially changing it to a match without Daniel Bryan. I mean, that that would be pointless. Adding Cena and Orton, I think, would just make things worse, actually. Um, but yeah, Daniel Bryan versus Triple H at this point uh, is very much a realistic possibility for WrestleMania, especially if CM Punk is out of the picture. Um, Daniel Bryan and Triple H is what makes sense. Daniel Bryan has been battling the authority. And um, actually, that match makes even more sense than... Uh, CM Punk versus Triple H, uh, considering the fact that this Brian Triple H thing has gone way back to uh, SummerSlam. That's where it all began. Um, so, you know, that match would make sense. And of course, Taker versus Sting, um, you know, that that's a match people want to see. Um, but I don't know if that's going to happen at this point. Uh, but if WWE was to try and change the card around, I think you would have to put Daniel Bryan in the WWE title match. All right, this next one comes from Fly By Night 2112. Hey, Aaron, I have heard a lot of people's displeasure with the Royal Rumble and who was in it, but I haven't heard anyone mention Evan Bourne. Where is he? Why wasn't he there? And will we ever see him again in WWE? I was definitely surprised that he wasn't in the Royal Rumble. He would have been a nice surprise for the show, and honestly, I wish I could have a, an answer for you, but I just don't know, and I don't know if... 
anybody really knows what's going on right now with, with Evan Bourne and why he hasn't come back. Um, the Royal Rumble would have been a great opportunity for him to return. And, uh, you know, that's his kind of match where he can go in there and do all the high-flying moves and, and the big spots, and he would have gotten the big pop. And they didn't do it. So um, at this point, I don't know when he's going to be returning. Um, maybe they're going to hold off on him until after WrestleMania. But he's already been gone for, what, three years now, it seems. And uh, they haven't brought him back. And I've talked about this before. I think that the longer period that goes without him returning, it's less likely that they're actually going to bother bringing him back when they're starting to... Uh, you know, bring in other NXT talents and they're going to focus on new talent rather than bringing back names from the past. And, uh, you know, I think that time is running out. I think you need to bring him back soon, as soon as possible, if you're going to bother bringing him back at all. So, uh, you know, at this point, it's still up in the air what's going on with him. Uh, he should be ready to go, uh, last I heard, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen with him. All right, this one comes from Tom09Hair. Hey, Aaron, assuming it isn't a storyline, how do you think WWE will handle CM Punk's absence on television? Surely they can't just ignore it as if he was a mid-carder. Well, you're right about that. And usually when a major star uh, disappears from WWE television abruptly, like they quit or whatever, um, WWE tends to acknowledge it on television. When Randy Savage left in 94... Vince McMahon uh, said something at the start of Raw uh, announcing that Savage was gone from the company. Uh, when Steve Austin walked out in 2002, um, you know, they mentioned it on television. They had The Raw come out. They had Vince come out. Um, so one would think that if he's really gone, that they will say something on television saying that he left the company for whatever reason. And even if it's a storyline, even if they do decide to bring him back, uh, you know, they might just want to mention him in case he does work things out and comes back. And then you could just play that into the storyline. You know, him being frustrated and leaving, you can work that into whatever storyline you're doing for WrestleMania if he ends up coming back. So, you know, I think it's best to definitely acknowledge it and not ignore it. I think if you ignore it, you're just going to make fans angry about it and they're going to do the CM Punk chants and... Uh, you know, they'll continue to rebel. So I, th I think it's in WWE's best interest to mention it on television, maybe start off Raw with Michael Cole announcing that he's left the company. All right, this one comes from WWE fan Dark Arrow. Hey, Aaron, do you think that if Jack Swagger didn't have the weed charge, he would have won versus Alberto Del Rio at WrestleMania and have been a main eventer now? Um, honestly, I don't think he was ever planned to win the, the world title against Del Rio. He was just a guy that was groomed to be a heel, um, an, an anti-Mexican heel to face Alberto Del Rio, a guy, you know, ripping into Del Rio's heritage and being Mexican and all that. You know, that was the whole idea was to have a good uh, villain for Del Rio to face at WrestleMania. I don't think the plan was ever for Swagger to get a run with the title. So I don't think that the weed charge really changed anything. I mean... To me, Jack Swagger was just a guy who was going to be a challenger for Del Rio and nothing else. All right, this one comes from Live Life Loudly. Hey, Aaron, what did you think of the WWE announcing Christian's return to SmackDown but not Raw? Would you say this is bad news for Christian's career? Um, no, I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's bad news. I mean, Raw has already got the, the um, post-Royal Rumble interest. You got people tuning in to find out what happened at the Rumble. And um, I think it's good to try and build up SmackDown every now and then and do something to get people interested in that show and not make it strictly a B show. Try to sometimes make it more of an A show. So, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with them having returns on SmackDown and advertising the returns in advance. So I really saw no big issue with that. I, I think that that was fine. Um, so that'll wrap it up for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thank you guys for checking out today's video. If you haven't subscribed already, you can do so. YouTube.com slash No DQ CAW. Click that fancy subscribe button and um, stay tuned to No DQ.com for all the very latest. A lot of news out right now. Uh, before I go here, I have one final question and it does contain a spoiler. So uh, you can just shut off the video right now if you do not want to be spoiled. This question comes from chat574. 
Hey Aaron, Christian and Antonio Cesaro are filling the final two spots in the chamber. Seriously? In all caps. Well, here's the thing, you know, someone brought up the idea, actually several people brought up the idea of a chamber match with Cena, Orton, Brian, CM Punk, Brock Lesnar, and Batista. The problem with that, in a, an elimination chamber match, five of the six guys are going to be doing jobs. Uh, so, you know, I, I didn't think that 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 um, lineup was all that likely. Um, you know, when you have an elimination chamber match uh, and everybody's going to be doing a job except for the winner, um, I think it's best that you do put in a few guys that are at a lower level that you can have them be the first ones out in the match. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, guys like Christian and Cesaro uh, get spots in the chamber. And I kind of find it funny because, you know, everybody's been complaining about Cesaro not getting a push and not getting uh, you know an opportunity and WWE's putting him in a main event match at Elimination Chamber and people are still finding a way to complain about it. Yes, he will probably be the first guy eliminated, but at least he's getting that exposure and getting in a big match with, you know, the top guys like John Cena and Randy Orton. So, you know, I I uh, I like the idea of Cesaro being in the match and as far as Christian goes, um, there's talk right now that he could be replaced and they might do an injury angle with him and put somebody else in there. I don't see Brock Lesnar going into that match because, um, once again, unless he's winning the title, he'll be doing a job and you really don't want to have Brock Lesnar losing if you're building him up for Undertaker. So uh, Brock Lesnar in a chamber would not make any sense unless he was winning the whole thing. So, you know, as it is, I, I really like the chamber lineup. I think it's a good one. Um, and putting Christian and Cesaro in there, um, you know, that way those guys could be the first ones out. And, um, you know, I think it'll be a good match. I think Christian will add to the match. I think Cesaro will add to the match. And um, I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, I, I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, so that'll do it for the DQ&A video. I'll see you guys next time for more.